teachers and students, we've been doing some experiments about heat and temperature. And we found out that those two concepts are a lot more complicated than we thought. We learned that temperature is actually defined as how quickly molecules are vibrating. The faster they vibrate, the higher the temperature. And this causes expansion and contraction. We did an experiment in which we took two samples of water and put a drop of food coloring in each. The only difference in the two samples was one was hot water and one was cold. And we found out that the food coloring dispersed in the hot water quicker. And our hypothesis is that it's because of the moving molecules. They're moving faster in the hot water and stirring up the food coloring as compared to the cold water where they're stirring more slowly. But what would happen if we had the exact same temperature in water, but we had different amounts of water? For this experiment, you're just gonna need two glasses, some water, and some ice cubes. It's a very easy experiment to do, so you may wanna try this yourself at home. In this beaker, I have 100 milliliters of water, and in this one, I have 250. It's the same temperature. These cups have been sitting out for a while, and they're at about 21 degrees Celsius, which is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's room temperature. What I'm gonna do is drop an ice cube into each one. I'm gonna drop identical ice cubes at the same time. And those ice cubes will start to melt because the water is at room temperature and those are at zero degrees Celsius. Here's what I wanna know. Since the water is the same temperature, will they melt at the same time? Will they melt at the same rate? Or will the ice cube in the smaller amount of water melt quicker? Or will the, water, the ice cube in the larger amount of water melt quicker? So if you have your lab sheet, take a minute to think about that and write your hypothesis. Identical beakers, identical liquids, same setting, same room, same day, same size of ice cubes. The control variable or test variable in this case is the amount of water. I varied the amount of water, the mass. Will they melt at the same time? Will the lesser amount melt the ice quicker? Or will the greater amount melt the ice quicker? So pause the video for a minute to think about that and to gather your materials if you wish to try this yourself. So record your initial temperature of the water. In this case, it is 21 degrees Celsius. Now get a timer ready and drop in the two ice cubes at exactly the same time and time how long it takes each one to melt. Here we go with two identical ice cubes. Whereas you can see, the ice cube in the larger amount of water is melting much faster than the one in the lesser amount of water. Can you figure out why that's happening? So there you have it, the ice melted much faster in the water sample that has more mass for some reason. Can you figure out why? This took just under six minutes. This one has taken over 20 minutes to melt the same size ice cube. And the finishing temperature here went from 21 degrees down to 14 degrees Celsius, while this one went from 21 down to four degrees Celsius. What might explain that result? 
Well, it turns out that since these two samples had the same temperature of water, and the ice cubes, of course, were at the same temperature, zero degrees Celsius, the only thing that account for the faster melting here was the increased mass of water. It turns out that though the temperatures were the same, there is more heat here because it has more mass. There's more water mo molecules at 21 degrees Celsius here than there are here. Heat is a measurement of temperature times mass. Temperature is simply how fast those molecules are moving, but heat takes into account how many molecules you have to work with. It's kind of like if I got tackled by a kindergartner. I could probably do okay with that. But if the whole classroom of kindergartners came at me, they could probably take me down. There's more kindergartners in this beaker than there are in this one. So they were able to conquer that ice cube much faster. Another way to think about it is this. If I held up a match that was lit, the flame on that is over a thousand degrees. It has an extremely high temperature. But the heat coming out of the vents in our ceiling from the heater is not a thousand degrees, it's only about 90 degrees. And yet the heater does a better job of heating this room than a match would. Because a match has a high temperature, but it has low heat, not much mass. Whereas the heater has a much lower temperature, but there's a lot of air, a large mass of air moving through that heater. So the difference between temperature and heat is temperature is how quickly the molecules are moving, and then heat takes into account also how many molecules you have. Because there are so many molecules in here, that ice cube could only lower that temperature a few degrees. Whereas here the ice cube had a much stronger effect on the lesser amount of water molecules. So until our next experiment, have a good time doing science. Thank you.